Hello again from a beautiful sunny day in Normandy. It's finally stopped raining and the roses are now all out. And today I'd like to talk about coachings and the coaching craze of the 19th century. And they're a breed I've had for the past 10 years. And not only are they beautiful birds, but they have a fascinating and very dark history, which involves tea, silver, war, and opium. This is a chamois cochin. The first cochins that came to the west were black, white, and this beautiful chamois colour, which is a much more elegant name in French than it is in English. In English it's called buff. I got so interested in looking into this history and it was so conflicting in different contemporary books about where these creatures actually came from. And there was a great deal about contemporary views of how the coaching craze got started and how long it carried on for. In fact, right into the 1870s there were still huge prices being paid for coachings. Those first coaching chinas that Queen Victoria showed to the public via the Illustrated London News, in fact had very little to do with these later cochins with their huge furry feet. This is a bantam. The bantams are thought to have been looted from the old summer palace at the end of the Opium Wars in 1860 and that's definitely how they got here to France, bought by soldiers. After that time, clipper ships bought many different colours of cochin and they became incredibly popular. In fact, the cochin craze Yes. The coaching craze, as it was called, and on the other side of the Atlantic in America, it was called hen fever, inflated the prices of coachings incredibly. So that in 1853, a coaching actually sold for the equivalent of £188,000. Coachings also ushered in a whole new interest in breeding and keeping poultry and exhibiting them. Um, unscrupulous breeders were also encouraged to fraudulently produce coachings, either by dyeing them, plucking their feathers, adding other feathers, or in coachings, one of the main things to do was a practice called fluffing. This was when each individual feather was taken and bent firstly one way and then the other way to produce a volume of fluff. This fluff that the coachings had was what made them very much prized. So the fluffier you could make your coaching, the more money you could get for it. Even hatching eggs were selling like hotcakes, magazines that sprang up at the time. For example, the weekly magazine Poultry Gazette advertised prize white coaching eggs at the equivalent of what would now be nearly £200 a dozen. The other thing that was boomed in the coaching craze, and it is actually very true, is that coachings can get very, very tame, so you can keep them just as pets. They're really lovely birds. What about keeping coachings themselves? Well, for a start, they're extremely hardy. Do you expect them to be that? Because their ancestors came by ship. Sometimes it took eight months for them to reach port. They were neglected, kept cooped up. Then there were typhoons, pirate attacks. They could be eaten by the captain and crew before they arrived at the dock. So I've written this all out on my blog, The Holistic Hen, and I hope you go and read it. And if you're interested in how the Pekingese dog got into the West as well, I've included that because they're all interlinked. And from Brandy Snaps and me, thanks for watching.